name is Harry Leary. I've been racing BMX for approximately uh, 10 and a half years. Um, it's come a long way since I started. Um, back in 1974, the first race that I ever raced in was a parks and recreation race. We had a total of probably 55 kids and we raced for bike parts. And it lasted approximately three hours and we went home muddy. Our moms were mad. And I think where the sport really came from was kids imitating motorcycle riders. Uh, I always wanted a motorcycle and my father would never purchase me one. He said it was too much money, it was too dangerous. So I bought me a bicycle and somebody else had the same idea and you know when you get two people you got competition. Guys came back from World War II you know, in war and found a pretty dull nation and a lot of them started riding motorcycles for adrenaline. And then they got in choppers. Kids in California who only had big cruisers to ride, although there were some 20 inch wheels available from somewhere or other, they started customizing their bikes. And then kids started emulating the choppers with their bikes. So there were all these bikes that were built up, uh, some of which looked quite a bit like a Stingray, but a Stingray didn't exist yet. And then Schwinn, well, was it 62 or 63, I think it was, sent a young uh, engineer out to California. And he came out and checked out all these bikes. And I remember this, because I was an older kid then. And Al Fritz came out, checked out all these custom bikes that kids were doing, and went back and they built the Stingray. The Stingray, which looked quite a bit like a motorcycle, handled great compared to all the other bikes. The Schwinn Stingray was just the one you wanted because of the frame itself. There were other Stingray type bicycles that were made back in the 60s that uh, kids were riding. Some of them were lighter than the Schwinn's, but uh, the best thing about the Schwinn bike was it held up, you know, it could take a beating, and that was important. You wanted that frame because it wouldn't break on you. We saw a lot of different bikes break, but the Schwinn's held up good. Plus they were guaranteed. If your frame broke, you could take it back to the Schwinn shop and they would order you a new one free of charge. You just had to put your parts back on it, which was a piece of cake for us back then. First bike was a uh, girl's Schwinn Stingray. You know, we welded a bar across in seventh grade metal shop. We would make uh, short little struts for our sissy bars and weld the crossbar onto our handlebars, and that was really the bikes that we played on, Schwinn bikes. You raced that for how long? Probably a few months. Then just, you know, went through numerous types of bikes as we were experimenting. I mean, you could have a bike and go out in one jump, blow up a wheel, or bend a crank. I guess you would say it was a Schwinn Stingray. You know, put the little knobby tires on it or what was available, and uh, take the banana seat off and put a small 10-speed seat on it and ride in the dirt. And that was, I guess, my first BMX bike. The one I raced was a junior Stingray. That was, for some reason, in, in my neighborhood, that was the desirable Stingray to have the one with the junior one, which actually has the lower ground clearance. It's a little bit shorter bike. But that was the one we liked. It had a banana seat on it. It was candy apple red. I went to the bike shop, went to Vans Bike and Key in Long Beach, who ended up, later ended up being my first sponsor, and got like the, the sticker kit and the, the candy paint kit and it had motorcycle handlebars on it and just the stock forks and stock cranks. I'm Mel Stausenberger from uh, Canoga Park, California. My dad bought me my first bike for my ninth birthday. It was a Schwinn Stingray and we bought it at Canoga Cycle Center and uh, it was blue and I had the option of either getting a knobby or a slick and I chose a slick because I liked drag racing back then, so slick seemed more of a race thing to me. Little did I know.
I think the biggest uh, tweaking that we were doing to our bikes at the time in 1973 to 74 was taking a Schwinn Stingray, chopping the frame at the seat mast, and then taking a press and pressing the frame together, re-welding it so we could put on longer, basically at that time they were 10-speed cranks off of, uh, we'll say, Schwinn Varsity. So we'd go from a four and a half or five and a half inch crank and we would put on a six and a half inch crank. And that was the biggest improvement you could do back in the day to a BMX bike. One day, uh, our welder at uh, Canoga Cycle Center, Mike Frankowicz, um, decided that he could lift the bottom bracket on our frame by cutting two inches out of it, out of the, the main stay and he'd heat up the rest of the bars and make it fit. We weld it there. We were using longer cranks. We had more power. We could re-gear our bikes so we could go faster. We geared our bikes anyway on our tracks, depending on where, but uh, having a longer crank, especially on flatter tracks, made a world of difference. I remember doing it at our shops. I remember having a couple of bikes done. They worked great. And I rode those bikes for a long time with no problem. Ashtabula came out with some really sweet parts. And then probably one of the biggest ones that I remember was the Redline Fork. Rick was building bikes like that, and I know he built some, you know, straight two bikes. I know Marvin's dad was really big into that, and he had, uh, you know, made some specially built bikes for Marvin. You know, because we show up at the race and we see these bikes, you know, and it's like, well, but I think Marvin's dad is also credited for making a longer crank for us because we had all run those really short cranks. He had a welder friend that actually cut these cranks, lengthened them, re-welded them, and we could actually get more leverage, and that changed everything as far as starts because you come out of the gate and you could actually have leverage on that thing, run a higher gear, and actually get more distance per pedal revolution.